Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Five hours ago, I posted a video breaking down Donald Trump's tweets, which happened like 15 minutes before that, ending the stimulus talks. In this video, I'm going to discuss some of the ramifications of this. So first, I'm going to explain what we lost. Then I'll give the Federal Reserve's reaction to this. Then I'll talk about the impact of what this means for stocks and real estate. I'll also talk about the impact of this for the election. And then we'll talk about the path forward. Let's begin. First, what did we lose? We lost the potential and the hope for unemployment pay, stimulus checks, housing and rental assistance. These three things right here are huge. School and student assistance, liability protections, airline aid, post office aid, state and local funding, testing, tracing, treatment aid, vaccine aid, PPP funding for small businesses, EIDL money for small businesses, Medicaid or COBRA for uninsured workers, no additional restaurant money, no airport money. Some top level reactions to this. Less unemployment pay means less money for consumer spending, which means likely lower earnings and lower earnings expectations going forward at some consumer driven stores. These could be Home Depot, Lowe's, Target, Walmart, Amazon. However, Without small business aid, those same companies could be the recipients of basically the death of more small businesses. We've already had 100,000 small businesses in this country die from the start of this pandemic. And this could be the final nail in the coffin for many tens of thousands more. That's tens of thousands of more businesses. Housing and rental assistance. We'll talk about this a little bit more in detail, but could end up leading to an eviction crisis in this country, which could lead to an actual foreclosure crisis and a real real estate pullback. This is not good. We are expected to be $31 billion behind on rent payments by January 1st. Now, school assistance actually increases the odds of a potential second wave if we have less money to ensure that schools can properly and safely stay reopened. Maybe they have money now because they're waiting for stimulus money to keep them topped off. But if schools are straining their budgets now, the next few months through the cold and well, flu season are going to be even more difficult. Liability protections, more and more lawsuits, especially against small businesses, will likely also be yet another nail in the coffin for small businesses, as if you needed another one. The airline industry will furlough tens of thousands of workers. Less money for the post office means slow and lost mail is likely to continue. Less or no state and local funding means potentially more layoffs of first responders and people who work in our local governments. No money or additional money for testing means that when the White House and other organizations rely on testing, like Stephen Miller, who gets tested five days in a row negative, and then on day six tests positive for COVID means we're stuck with the same lame tests that we have now. Testing is not reliable in this country. No EIDL or PPP money means yet another nail in the coffin for small businesses. And when businesses now lay off workers, they won't get the Medicaid or COBRA that these stimulus negotiations would have promised for their health insurance, which means if you're unemployed, there go your benefits as well. No restaurant money. So there go tens of thousands of more restaurants. No airport money, which means dilapidated airports, now with even less revenue coming in from the airlines, continue to decay. Loretta Mester, a president of one of the banks, the Cleveland Bank of the Federal Reserve, has the following to say. Our recovery will now be much slower. The timing of the stimulus package is actually less important than the presence of a stimulus package, AKA whether it happens this week or next week or in a month, doesn't matter so much. But now that we hear we might not see a stimulus package until January, it's not good. Remember Donald Trump says if he gets reelected, he'll do another stimulus package, but let's be real. He won't get control of the house if let's say Demo or if Republicans swept everything, Republicans got the house, the Senate and the presidency, he won't have power to do anything until late in January when the next Congress is in session and his next term begins. Furthermore, Loretta Mester says that she built a stimulus package into her forecast for the future growth of our economy. And so have multiple other board members at the Federal Reserve. This means when the Federal Reserve says 
we're gonna have low interest rates and low inflation through 2025, and it's probably gonna take through the end of 2023 for us to get to low unemployment again? Well, those numbers might now just get kicked down the road even longer. It's going to take longer to get to lower unemployment levels. And we're going to have less inflation for longer, which means we have to retool our investment strategies for an even longer outlook. She further goes on to say that she's disappointed we didn't get a package. She says, we're still in a pretty big hole. People and households need help. 11 million people are still out of work. We only got half of people their jobs back. People still need to be on unemployment, except those checks will now be substantially smaller. She is disappointed that monetary and fiscal policies and, uh, well, organizations came in strong at the beginning. But then the only thing that kept pushing through was the Federal Reserve and Congress basically went on recess. She also says that without money for contact tracing or more social distance education or mask education or money for just straight up vaccines to bail us out of this means we'll be in this pandemic even longer. So now if we start putting together some of the puzzle pieces here, some of the things that we can expect. First, more bankruptcies in small businesses. Small businesses are probably not going to be the place to invest going forward. Real estate. Well, real estate's going to be an interesting one. See, the housing market in general might actually benefit from a lack of stimulus. This, this sounds crazy, but listen to this just for a moment. The housing market in general, and then I wanna get to the specifics about evictions because we've got a very serious problem here. The housing market in general might actually benefit from a lack of a stimulus plan because a stimulus plan was associated with, uh oh, more money printing means we'll probably see more inflation. And when we have a greater expectation for higher inflation, we tend to see higher inflation. Expectations play funny tricks on the overall market uh, and, and inflation rates. So if we now expect no stimulus package, then it's likely we're going to see low inflation for years longer which means rates will stay low for years longer. And we're more likely to see this housing market boom continue and rates continue to trend downward, which makes real estate more affordable. And remember every 1% that interest rates fall, prices tend to go up 10%. The big thing that's been happening over the last 10 years in real estate as to why prices have been going up is because interest rates have been going straight down. Pretty much, with the exception of 2018, when the Federal Reserve's like, let's raise rates. And now they're like, ooh, shouldn't have done that. If anything, that's gonna keep rates low even longer, the memory of what happened in 2018. So that's one part of the housing market. In general, the housing market actually benefits from another stimulus package. The reality is many buyers of homes these days aren't necessarily relying on stimulus packages. The people relying on stimulus are the people most hurt right now. Retail, hospitality, entertainment, restaurants, small businesses. They're not in a position generally to be able to afford homes right now anyway. So uh, on that side, the housing market can actually continue to just do well. However, we have this nasty hammer that might drop. That's kind of uh, floating above our heads called the eviction crisis. And when that hammer drops, it's gonna suck. See, the next stimulus package was going to bail out the tenants who are way behind on rent. These are tenants who haven't been able to pay rent because they've lost their jobs in retail hospitality or whatever it might be. Well, their hopes of now catching up have just been minimized. And when the eviction ban ends at the end of this year, we're going to see a flood of evictions. By current estimates, we could see as many as 12 million households be evicted. That's over 30 to 40 million people and if a third of those evictions actually go through, we could potentially see 4 million households evicted. 4 million households evicted. And if even just half of those put their houses up on the market, we would see a boost to housing market inventory by 2 million, which would be about a 28% increase in the amount of available houses on the market. Now, it's unclear how much a big boost of inventory like that is actually going to drag prices down, because rates are trending down. And when rates are trending down, you might see prices go up 10% a year. Oh, but now we got a flood of inventory and that takes prices down, say 10% a year. That might cancel out. Certainly a lot more inventory will slow the housing market recovery, but it's not 100% clear how severe the eviction crisis will be. But the more severe it is, the more likely it is we'll see real estate prices slowly start getting depressed. 
Could be a time to buy at the beginning of next year when we start seeing evictions. Though my heart goes out for everybody in the situation where they might be in a place where they have to move. Oh, and quick note, if you want a fun way to find deals in real estate, go to metkevin.com slash deals or click the link down below for Deal Machine. I've partnered with Deal Machine to get you some extra free credits so you can send free follow-ups to fixer-uppers in your neighborhood. Deal Machine is an awesome software and I'm personally going hardcore on using this software over the next two years. When it comes to stocks, my expectations are that the stocks that I hold in the 1337 portfolio, which you can see at metkevin.com slash 1337 V11, are going to continue to be power player stocks. These are stocks like Tesla, Amazon, Apple, Redfin, Etsy. Take a look at these stocks. These stocks, while they might see fewer sales in the short term because of a lack of stimulus, and our economy might be drawn out a little longer, the growth in our economy might be drawn out a little longer. If anything, these stocks will end up being the long-term beneficiaries of smaller businesses going bankrupt, and unfortunately, the world moving online to tech. This is certainly bad news for restaurants and airlines for the time being though. Regarding the election, I'm personally surprised that Donald Trump who just Saturday said, let's get a deal done, and who a few weeks ago said, let's come up on price, just get a deal done, all the money goes back to the American people anyway, just get something done. I'm personally surprised that Donald Trump would call off negotiations the way he did. Apparently he was on a phone call with Mitch McConnell and other Republican leaders, and Mitch McConnell said that Pelosi was stringing him along and no deal she cut with Mnuchin could pass the Senate. McConnell said, that we were never going to put a $2 trillion bill on the floor anyway. Pelosi doesn't want to go below that. And therefore, McConnell wants to instead focus on just assigning somebody and confirming somebody to that Supreme Court seat. And as a result, Donald Trump ended that phone call and promptly let everybody know via Twitter that stimulus talks were over. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and Nancy Pelosi ended up talking by phone briefly just to verify that this was indeed the case. And yes, it is indeed the case. Stimulus talks are over thanks to Donald Trump ending those stimulus talks. Donald Trump says that he will pass a massive package when he is reelected. Unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, I don't think he'll have the power to do this until at least January because he would have to convince the House to vote with him. Remember the House, even after the election, there's still that lame duck period where you still have Nancy Pelosi in charge of the House, which is the same thing you have right now. Mitch McConnell in charge of the Senate. No nothing changes until January. The election won't really take effect until January, in other words. Now, part of me believes that Donald Trump is doing this to punish Nancy Pelosi and to suggest that Nancy Pelosi is just trying to bail out blue states. And I'm saying that because he literally said that in his tweet. But I think we all know as consumers and voters and individuals that Republicans were willing to give state and local governments $250 billion. Democrats were asking for $417 billion. We're talking about less than a $200 billion difference here. That's it. $200 billion and they blow up the entire package because of less than 10% of a difference. To me, it's surprising that Donald Trump would do this because Donald Trump is in charge. And generally the party who is in charge ends up taking the blame for a failure to get a deal done. Not always, but usually. And so therefore I'm a little bit surprised. The Problem Solvers Caucus has come out and said that America's families and America's small businesses are hurting and cannot afford any more delays especially when a deal is within reach. We cannot overstate how important it is to get a deal done. Inaction is not an option. Joe Biden came out and said, Trump ended talks that would get help for our businesses, schools, for our families struggling and for those unemployed. That would have preserved hundreds of thousands of jobs. But Donald Trump decided today that none of that matters to him. Pelosi asked, are these the steroids talking? And said, Trump has a real disdain for science. Democrats have a scientific plan to crush the virus. Some Republican aides even were shocked and didn't see this coming. Now, this isn't all just to bag on Donald Trump, even though that was a lot of kind of negative on Donald Trump, mostly because I think everybody's kind of scratching their heads like, dude, w what are you doing, man? And that's just real, no matter which side you're on. I think all sides right now are like, okay, maybe he's got some tricks up his sleeves. So we have two paths forward, maybe. Maybe Donald Trump actually takes over negotiations. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Donald Trump might be a little too proud to do that. But if Donald Trump cut everyone out, 
got rid of Mnuchin, got rid of Meadows, and he finally picked up the phone and talked to Pelosi directly. Maybe a deal could happen that way. However, right now, while that path is possible, and maybe it's part of Donald Trump's greater strategy, who knows, maybe Pelosi will even call Donald Trump directly and say, hey, can we make a deal? Can we still make this happen? That's possible. Maybe this is all just a big negotiation strategy. And if it ends up working, hats off. But right now, a lot of people are pissed because we have no clarity. Well, I guess the only clarity we have is that we ain't getting any money. I guess that's pretty clear. But the other possible way forward is unfortunately waiting to the negotiations that will occur on December 12th. By December 12th, the government's budget will expire again, which means we'll be at another fiscal cliff where if we go over the cliff on December 12th without a budget deal, the government's funding will run out. And that's it. Boom. No money for the government. We go into another government shutdown. Democrats believe there might be a way to include stimulus negotiations into that. But that's not good because December 12th is a long ways away. Right now it is October 6th. We've got over two months and a week before December 12th. The election will have happened by then and thousands of more people will have been laid off, lost their jobs, unable to pay their bills, and gotten significantly more behind on rent and will have less money for the testing, tracing, and treatment that we need to end this freaking pandemic. I'm sick and tired of being in at home. But what does this mean going forward? What am I going to do going forward? Well, in my opinion, I'm going to continue to purchase on weekdays. Today was a weekday. As soon as this news came out, I went in and talked to all of my course members, especially those in the money course. I notified all of you and I said, folks, I'm buying. And these were the things I'm buying. I said exactly which options I was buying, what stocks I was buying. This is very normal. But in addition to ramping up my purchases of my favorite tech stocks, 1337 portfolio, you can get an overview on, I'm going to probably double back down on picking up more real estate. Because what we were just told is that the real estate market is likely to continue not only to stay buoyant, but continue to prosper under an era of low interest rates for the foreseeable future. We will have to deal with an influx of inventory from a potential eviction crisis. I do believe the real estate market is strong enough right now. We'll see. We'll have to track numbers every single month. But the real estate market is strong enough at this point to absorb that excess inventory. In fact, when we look at multifamily housing statistics, over 94% of renters paid their rent in September. It didn't start that way, but people ended up making their payments in September. Now, we still had some unemployment pay in September, so we'll have to see how October goes. But in the meantime, these are my thoughts and strategies going forward. Hopefully this is very helpful for you. Uh, in the meantime, I'm so sorry, this, this sucks. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.